guys, how's it going? So today we are planting blackberries, finally. I picked up four of the eight blackberry plants that we're gonna be planting today last spring. They've been in containers since then. They wintered behind our barn. I think they're doing okay. There are some promising looking canes on them. So I'm gonna hope for the best on those four. And then I've got some others here I wanna share with you, three different varieties. Here they are, we've got two black satins. Don't those berries look delicious? And they look super great. Now these four came from the western side of the state recently. Their weather is way ahead of ours, so these look far better <laughs> than this one right here. Uh, but this is a triple crown, there's two of these. And then I've got four, so this is one of four, Primark 45. There's the other three. <laughs> So they're more on our schedule, but the canes look pretty good. I'm hopeful that they survived the winter in these pots. Time will tell, I suppose, on those. I wanted to try a few different varieties because this is the first time I have ever grown blackberries. This is gonna be a new experience for me. Uh, from what I understand, they grow very similarly to raspberries in that the crown and roots of the plant are perennial. So that part of the plant comes back year after year and produces new growth. But the canes that come up from the roots, those are biennial. So they only have a two year life cycle. First year canes or first year growth are called primocanes. Second year growth are called flora canes. Canes. Typically, for most blackberry plants, they fruit on two-year-old canes, so on their flora canes. The first year is just vegetative growth. However, the Primark 45s, and I'm not sure how many varieties do this, but it said it was one of the first varieties that was a primocane fruiting blackberry, so it will fruit a bit on first-year canes. So what we've got on these uh, black satin and triple crowns, these are flora canes this year because these were canes that grew last year as primal canes and created leaves, so this year we should get a tiny bit of fruit off of them. Kind of the same with our Primarks here, this one and this one, these two canes were new last year. So they were primal canes last year, they are flora canes this year, we should get fruit off of them. This one, though, you can definitely tell it's different. See that peely bark and it looks kind of dull brown. I think that this one's lived its life cycle. It did fruit a bit last year, which for more of like, this one behaves like an ever bearing raspberry. So if you were to want to see if this cane would still produce a little bit earlier on in the season, you could go down and clip the growth out. It would send out more lateral, lateral growth and maybe produce some berries early but I'm guessing that this one's done, just based on looks. I went over the differences between summer bearing and ever bearing raspberries anyway, in a recent video, maybe we'll link that down below, but this is a brand new experience for me with the blackberries. Um, we do need to space them a little bit differently, so all of these varieties are semi-upright, so there are upright type, semi-upright, and trailing. Um, usually on trailing type blackberries, you wanna space them out like 10 feet, I believe is the recommended spacing, and then for upright varieties, about every three feet, that's kind of what I'm going to do today even though these are like semi upright because I've got a 30 foot raised bed which we'll go out and look at here in a second. I started here in the greenhouse because it's really nice and toasty in here uh, but I'm going to cite the first two like on the very ends because they can spill out over and then we'll space the rest of them so that'll leave six in the middle that will just space out evenly and hope for the best. The other couple nice things about the three varieties we ended up with is that they're all thornless so we're not going to be dealing with thorn filled canes because they can be pretty wicked um, and I didn't really want to deal with that our raspberries already have enough thorns for the whole berry patch so I wanted to go thornless with the blackberries they also on their descriptions say they're all really sweet berries and some descriptions on blackberries say they're sweet tart so I made sure in fact I brought some thornless boysenberries home too and it says sweet tart on their label and I just decided I don't think I want to go with those I want to do everything that's going to be like high sugar content really sweet and really pleasant to eat quick facts about each one of these varieties the black satin is a really heat tolerant type which really is helpful for us here in our area. Zone five through eight typically grows about five to six feet tall with support, which they do will have. Uh, and they produce a big crop of berries uh, about midsummer. Triple crown here, great big sweet berries that produce for over five weeks in the middle of summer. That's a long harvest time. I think this is a pretty popular variety. Uh, zone five through eight again, averages about six feet tall, just like the black satin with support and uh, average width of about three feet. So I think these four will be the most tame. And then we have our Primark 45s, which is the only blackberry variety that I know of that fruits on first year canes. So that'll be interesting to have the ability to have earlier fruit, like maybe a couple different crops, kind of like an ever bearing raspberry, but they have really good disease resistance, really good heat tolerance. Uh, they are a zone six through eight, so a little bit less hardy than these other four. We'll have to see how they do, but if they survive in containers behind our barn, 
they'll survive in their raised beds. Five to six feet tall and wide on these. So these will probably need or take up rather the most amount of space. So let's head out. I'll show you where we're going to plant them. Erin and I have to head down to the garden center there to pick up more raised bed mix to fill up that bed. They do like full sun and slightly acidic soil like our raspberries. So we're gonna treat them basically the same. In fact, we're running a drip system that's going to come off of the raspberry drip system. So they'll all water at the same time. Here we are. So the first two beds are designated for raspberries. This one's full. We've got heritage ever-bearing raspberries, which we just showed you when I did some pruning. We're doing an experiment where I'm treating these to get one fall crop, big fall crop out of this half. And then I'm gonna see what happens if we go for two crops here with the other half. This whole bed will be filled with fall gold ever-bearing raspberries. You can see we started last year, but that's all the plants we could get our hands on. Um, so I did the same thing and pruned and fertilized, but we will be planting the rest of this here soon. You can see how we run our drip system here. This is important because this is what we're gonna be doing in the next bed. Because see this supply line right here? It comes from here. So this bed, let's see, the drip originates over here. It was trenched over. These are all in their own zone. So the drip comes up underneath the bed and feeds all of these raspberries. And then it's trenched down here, comes up into this bed, feeds this whole bed. And we are going to dig down right outside here and tee off of the supply line. And then we will trench it right over here. We'll come up underneath this bed and then we will fill it all up run the drip line on top of the raised bed mix, and then we can plant. So you can kind of see the setup here, 30 feet long, three foot wide on the interior. So from the inside to the inside, it's three feet. We've got these four by four posts that come up every, I think seven and a half feet is what it ended up being. And then uh, we've got some metal cable here. I don't know, what is it, steel cable? Anyway, it's running at two different lengths to help hold canes up. So, you know, never growing blackberries before, I'm hoping that this system works out. It's definitely gonna be an experiment, but we can add more cables if we need to, or more support if we need to. Okay, so we do have our work cut out for us. I think what we'll do first is head down to the garden center so that we know we've got enough raised bed mix to get this thing filled. I can't remember how many bags the other beds took us, um, but because we are not very deep here, I think that they're about 12 inches deep we're just going to fill the whole thing with raised bed mix uh, because these blackberries wanting more acidic soil our native soil is super high ph so once those roots hit that ph they're going to need a lot of conditioning like that soil is going to need a lot of conditioning to keep the plants happy anyway let's head down to andrews get the raised bed mix and then we can get going it also got down to 21 last night everything looks fine though like i covered some of my uh, planters up by the house and they look great I did uh, use garden quilt though, rather than like that summer weight fabric that I had been using up to that point, And I think that that was helpful. This right here, so many possibilities. In fact, I think I'm gonna do something different in this pumpkin area this year. Not sure, but you can see a bunch of leaves and grass clippings and stuff from last year. They've done a good job of breaking down really. There's all of our artichokes. Yet to be seen if they survived our winter. We did mulch them up, but we're waiting to uncover them completely until it's nice and warm. Look at this. I'm making uh, garlic honey roasted carrots for dinner tonight, one of our side dishes. Isn't it crazy that like in this really kind of crummy piece of dirt, <laughs> we've got this beautiful crop of carrots just hanging out below the soil surface from last year. These were planted, what, in July? ish they're little but they are tasty and i ne never thinned them either look at these gorgeous this is always really exciting to me Let's see is there anything in this bucket nope perfect it's supposed to be 63 tomorrow and for the next week i mean the temperatures are going to hover around above freezing just above but we're going to get days in the mid 60s and i am ready for it Yeah, let's take a look really quick. <laughs> See the garden quilt? See before I was just using this summer weight fabric, which works great when it's not so cold. Oh yeah, everything looks good. Oh, I'm gonna leave it tucked in for a little while longer because it's still below freezing right now. What are you doing? 
You say hi. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Are you checking it out? Uh, uh, oh, that seems like a good idea. The floor did need some cleaning. Uh, hey, uh, what have you been eating? You want the camera just like your brother. <laughs> When we're down at the garden center, I'm gonna also see if I can have my dad identify whatever this is on a Japanese maple. And we found these last spring on one of our big maple trees. They look like some kind of an egg. Weird. They have some stuff sitting outside. I wonder if there's any in the this warehouse. Let me go check. Oh, look, they haven't brought their stuff out yet. Flower, this is where the flowers hang out at night. I think I see it. Do you see it? Yeah. Oh, yay. I wonder how many bags that is. A lot, perfect. So what I need to do is go grab a forklift. I'll move these three pallets out of the way to unearth this one. Then we'll take that over to the truck and just load up what we can. You can't get in here and no. load up room? No, mm -mm. not for the uh, forklift and the forks together. Uh, you know, it's probably possible, but the skill level here, <laughs> I would rather unearth it the, get some of this the hard way. Here. No, we got plenty of that. That's, we'll probably uh, use some of that. Tough to find. Okay, so I'm gonna go locate a forklift that is not being used, and I'm gonna have my dad look at this weird thing, these weird eggs. See what he has to say. For people buying reasonable amounts <laughs> of bagged items, they keep stacks up front here and inside. These are pretty, Sanetti. Uh, can you identify what those eggs are on a Japanese maple? <laughs> I thought I thought I would show it to Dad to see you if he what? can you, you see know what those. You we're gonna do. We're gonna go put this under the microscope. What? Yes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Let's do that. Or the glass. The glass. We're gonna call it the glass. Isn't that weird? Oh, that's really weird. They were on our red points last spring. Oh my gosh. And then this spring, uh, Paul's been finding them on our Japanese maples. They. I thought they were scale at first, but I don't think they're scale. It looks like something came along and just boop, 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 yeah. laid eggs. They look like <laughs> seeds. You know what I mean? They look like... Yeah, they do. Yeah. See that? Those are probably mites. Those are my egg pouches. I'm going to light our garden on fire. Oh. You guys, this is awesome. How is that awesome? Well... It's only awesome if it's something good. I know, but I've not seen them layered like that. Have you? No. That's why I'm asking you. Okay, let's get your dad. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. Isn't that weird? Mm -hmm. I looked up maple scale on in, on Google. Usually it's a cottony scale. On yeah, the... and I, I couldn't find anything. They don't squish. They're like seeds almost, Mom was saying, and that's that is true. Well, or there was something in there that's already that's crawled dead. out. Oh, great. Okay, I'm just gonna walk around until I find a forklift. And the eggs, we're not e even sure what those are. Maybe we can put, I took a close up picture of them. It looks like it was some kind of an egg or scale or something that broke open at one point and maybe something exited. I don't know, whatever it is, I think it's just the leavings. It's just a shell at this point, hopefully, but we're gonna keep our eye out for those.
Got the goods. Well, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Most people have like a, a Yeti or something, but not you. Nespresso has changed my life. <laughs> so we can load everything up into the truck yeah, what then. Do we, need? Uh, we need half inch supply line uh, and then we need brown ha uh, half inch drip tubing, landscape staples, elbows, uh, straight coupler, tees, <laughs> all the things, a shovel. All right, I'll set my drink down. Probably a couple of straights. A couple, of, let's see, four elbows. Grab a couple of those. Landscape staples. Okay, so we've got everything that we need out here, we think. We'll probably have to make a trip or two to the barn, uh, but we need to start by digging our trench and digging out to where we can go underneath this bed and get the drip in. So that's what we're gonna do. So the water line has been buried. We teed off right here, made a little trench, got it all the way over here. Now you'll just see the tube coming up here. So this is where it comes into the bed. We'll run the brown drip tubing as soon as I have all the planting done. Decided to put a layer of soil acidifier down right on top of our native soil because the berries want a little bit lower pH. And really all of our plants need all the help they can get in that category, most of them. There's not a lot of plants that really like high pH soil. So anyway, as it gets more water down there, as we start irrigating more and more, that soil acidifier will work its way into our soil. It's not a once and done though. It's something that we have to continually do it. Hopefully it's not something that you have to do it. it may not be something you need to do with yours depending on your soil chemistry. And then we went in with raised bed mix. We used 30 bags that were one and a half cubic feet to fill this raised bed, which is a lot. Again, this raised bed is 30 feet long, three feet wide. It's not really a typical size raised bed. You know, our other ones are way smaller, um, but you know, it was definitely convenient using the bags. My parents had them down at the garden center and it's worked really well for us in the past, this, this particular mix. It's what we have in the other two as well and things are growing great. You could certainly, and I think most people with a bed this big would go with a bulk compost. That's what we did with our smaller raised beds when we initially filled them up. I think you might find if you have a trellising system like this, trying to get the bulk stuff in with like a cart or a wheelbarrow might be a little bit harder. Bags were a little more convenient. Either way, the bed is filled. So after that was done, I went through and I just poured some berry tone right in the locations where we're gonna be planting. And we're just spacing these out equally. So I'm putting the Primarchs back here just because it's a little iffy. We'll see how they do coming back this spring. And then I put the fresh ones that I just picked up toward the front here. So we've got, these are the black satins right here. 
and then we've got the triple crowns right here. Let's just pop one of these out of the can so you can see the root system and then we'll get them all planted. I can see where like they were initially started. See that little pot in there? Like a little fabric pot. All right, that's what they look like. So we're gonna loosen this up a little bit. And planting should be easy because the soil is all fluffy. Okay, let's get all these planted and watered in. out a new one I did two of them two new ones oh my oh yeah dang those look so good the charcoal that's what they call them right charcoal yeah mm-hmm like that so much more than the tan yeah I take either color though <laughs> honestly so Aaron is getting us hooked up with a hose link here so the water originates over here with another hose link and then comes over and hooks to this hose link which this the metal piece that we had custom welded onto the back of the gator has been like that was a good call, Aaron. Yeah, it's well, it's nice because you can daisy chain hose links. Right, but we got them all planted, so you can hardly see them in there. Right there, there. The dark spots is the extra soil that was around the Primarchs. I just used that in areas that I felt were a little bit lower uh, and might settle a little bit more, but I just spaced them out like two per section right here. I think it'll work out really nicely. Oh, I'm so excited. Project complete. I am so excited about this, you guys, so excited. Especially because I think I mentioned that the rest of the fall gold raspberries are due to arrive any time now, and we will have all three of these beds filled up with berries, hopefully producing uh, well by next year, probably, uh, giving these a chance to kind of root in. I think the heritage uh, raspberries are gonna do really well this year and give us lots of berries. So anyway, you can see the water system here, half inch supply line that comes up from underneath. And ideally you'd be using these half inch clamps on every single connection, like right here, but I ran out, I didn't have enough. So all the connections underground, so the one over there, right there, that's the only connection that we have to the supply line and then it comes straight over and then there's no connection, it just loops up underneath. So anything that had to do with underground or with this line at least is clamped. This, if it springs a leak or something, that's really easy to fix because it's on the surface. Of course, we will cover over these um, tubes as soon as we can test the water system and make sure that they're all working properly and then we'll cover them over. Um, anyway, we used a T, half inch T, and took off this direction down the length of the bed and then took off this direction. And in the other beds, we made a square shape. So we went over and then did an elbow and went up, but it's really best if you can make the least amount of connections possible. It's just less areas for it to start leaking or have any issues. And then when we got to a plant, I used a little landscape staple just to kind of tack down the tubing, make sure that every plant has plenty of water. And we decided to go with the brown drip tubing with emitters every 18 inches as opposed to just a supply line with emitters straight to the plant because these will fill in and they're gonna send up canes all over the place, not just in this area. So we thought for better water coverage, more efficiency, it would be better to do it this way. Anyway, oh. This is just so exciting, so exciting. Here's a look from this direction and then toward the cut garden. And this, the shed should be done by the end of the month. So 
really looking forward to that. Then we'll get it all scheduled to be painted. It's just all coming together so well. So now we have our orchard and we've got blackberries, raspberries, blueberries, uh, strawberries kind of hit and miss around the property. That's kind of the last thing I wanted to really kind of hammer down maybe this year is a more permanent location for strawberries. So a raised bed somewhere. I'm just thinking raised bed that's a little bit higher, maybe like waist high, so they're really easy to pick. I think that would be really nice. But who knows if we'll get to that or not. There's a lot to do yet out here. I'm so excited about it. That is it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this, seeing how we prep our raised bed and get these blackberries in. Blackberries themselves, like, you know, all of my knowledge about them is basically just in containers. I've never had them in the ground before. Um, so this is gonna be a learning curve year for me. I'm really looking forward to it. I do believe that they, they have performed really well for a lot of people in my area. So we're gonna hope and pray that they perform really well for us and give us lots of berries. Anyway, we'll have lots of progress reports for you guys on these as the season progresses, and we will see you in the next video. Bye.